65-year-old Donald Dardar has been living off the land in Pointe Chance, Louisiana his whole life. His father taught him how to hunt when he was just a child. Uh, and he got one. My dad taught me everything that I needed to know about surviving. A trap of uh, neutral, coon, uh, muskrat, otter. But over the last several decades, rising water and sinking land have drowned most of his childhood hunting grounds. But I've I seen a lot of that, a lot of that disappearing. This is where we used to, uh, used to have land before, now we're shrimping on top of that, and the land's completely, completely gone. Marshes that were once thick and fertile are now a network of ever-growing saltwater canals. Like now, the, the places that we used to do the trapping for the, for the animal, you know, that it just washed all out away and it washed all the land out and now we're fishing. We just uh, kept adapting to the changes. That, that's our way of life down here and that's what we've been doing. But that way of life is disappearing. Louisiana loses a football field of coastline every hour. That's 16 square miles a year. And according to scientists, things are only getting worse. These marshes, they play a really essential role in the life cycle of a lot of marine organisms. Unfortunately for us here in Louisiana, our marshes are probably among the most vulnerable on Earth because they're very low-lying. They're sitting right above sea level. Pointe Chens and its neighbor, the Isle de Jean Charles, are about 90 minutes southwest of New Orleans. At some points, these communities are just a foot above sea level. Indigenous tribes such as the Biloxi Chichimacha Choctaw had lived here since the 1800s but soon all their homes might be washed away. Southeast Louisiana, the southern part of Terrebonne Parish, had really suffered a lot because you get a tide that comes in from the south, southeast, southwest, and that water has to go someplace. So unless you stop that or slow it down, it'll, it'll eat up the land. Time to take cover, time to take cover. It's been real tough. You can hear the, the shingles coming off. The island has been in the news for years. When storms come, so do massive floods. Even high tide will cover Island Road, the only way in and out. This area has become an early warning about the threats of climate change worldwide. However, the tribes have always been resilient. For generations, they've rebuilt homes, raised them on stilts, and despite constant flooding and cleanup, they've stayed. But now, people have reached a breaking point. It was only fitting in 2020 that this hurricane season would be a historic one, breaking multiple records, including the most named storms. For the second After a 2020 season that saw five major storms hit the coast, even longtime holdouts like Chris Brunet have decided to leave. Like many from the tribe, he's taken a deal from the state to move inland. It, it had been a, a decision that I hesitated to make until the last day. It was an, a yes with, with, with hesitation because this place has always been home. But residents of Isle de Jean Charles have little choice. The Louisiana coast is eroding four times faster than other areas around the world. Some of this has been caused by climate change, but a series of man-made decisions has also played a huge role. In 1927, the Great Mississippi Flood killed 500 people and left 600,000 homeless. In response, the Army Corps of Engineers built a series of levees to prevent another overflow. But these levees also stopped the Mississippi River from bringing much needed sediment to the Delta. And as a result, what, what used to happen naturally was that during the spring flood, a lot of water and sediment would basically disperse across this very large area and add a thin additional layer pretty much every year. And that allowed these wetlands to kind of keep up with rising sea level. But once we built the levees to prevent flooding, uh, that sedimentation stopped, and the, the sinking did not stop. In the far-flung search for oil, modern geologists and geophysicists often make use of the helicopter and the marsh buggy, a special vehicle which can take them into almost inaccessible swampland. Around the same time, oil and gas companies discovered rich oil reserves under the marshland and in the Gulf. Without laws to protect the marshes, they dug thousands of miles of canals to transport crews and equipment to and from their oil wells. And the problem is that these canals, they have widened. Uh, they, you know, you get wave erosion. So the edges of those marshes along the canals, they, they kind of retreat. So in some cases, you know, the widening has, has literally turned into entire open water bodies that have formed. And uh, but it, that, that's what helped bring that salt water 
faster, further in, inland, you know, so that's what uh, messed up a lot of our marshes for the further in. If you very abruptly start digging these canals, then suddenly salt water is going to penetrate into, uh, you know, environments that are not really adapted to that. And you get these very kind of disruptive changes, and all of these things kind of contribute to, you know, weakening uh, the entire system. The levees kept the delta from regrowing. The oil and gas companies dug even more, and then the world's oceans started rising faster. Sea levels are now increasing by three millimeters a year. Global warming is melting ice, and the oceans are heating up and expanding. You know, all the predictions are that it's going to ramp up further in the future. Now, it's going to depend on human actions how much it's going to ramp up in the future. In response, the state of Louisiana is building a barrier between the land and the water. The Morganza to the Gulf Levee Protection System is a 98-mile, $3 billion wall designed to block the rising Gulf water. But Al de Jean Charles falls outside the levee ring. The island has been sacrificed, and the state has other plans for the tribe. In 2016, Louisiana won a $48 million HUD grant to build a resettlement area in the town of Shriver, 35 miles inland. The people of Al de Jean Charles will get a new home for free, but they must give up residency on the island. Because they didn't want to include us in the Morganza to the Gulf Hurricane Protection System. Now I got to go there and let go of my house? I mean, where the fairness in that? I mean, uh, it's, it, it's like it, it makes no sense. This new development is being built on old sugarcane fields, far from the water. There's no hunting or fishing here. But after decades of fighting Mother Nature, tribal members like Brunei took the deal. And I didn't think that that, that was going to happen in my time. Um, but it is. And that's still a, a strange feeling. It, it, it really is. The development is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2021, but delays caused by COVID-19 may push that date back. Teresa Dardar, Donald's wife, has no plans to move from her home. The couple live just inside the levee ring. Their home is protected, but Teresa still feels too much of her indigenous culture has already been lost. Sure, we could build a house, buy a house somewhere else, but it it would never be the same. This is the roots. This, just like a plant, you deroot a plant and you leave it in the sun, it's going to die. I ain't got that many more years left, so I think I, I, I'm going to ride out my years, I'm sure, here. We should, should still have enough land for my, for my time anyway. But uh, I hope I don't, I don't even see this right here all disappear. It'd be heartbreaking to see uh, all this land gone. Louisiana is not the only place where coastal erosion is an immediate threat. Well, there are some countries that will disappear altogether. We, ha we have all these mega cities in these very low-lying environments, and they are, you know, facing uh, very similar issues. I mean, Ile de Jean Charles is, of course, already being relocated, and it's a complex operation. Now, just imagine if you have to do this for a community that is like a thousand people, or ten thousand people, or a hundred thousand people, or a million people, because that's where we're headed eventually. And uh, it's, I don't think anyone really knows how that's going to work. Mm -hmm.